Our second linear approximation example is a lot more of the flavor of what you need linear approximation for. In this case, we're being asked to estimate the value of 16.034 to the three halves using linear approximation. Importantly for this question, to use linear approximation, we need this original function f of x. In this case right here, we are actually need to generate that ourselves. Though it should be fairly obvious, the f of x we're looking for is the operations in this e expression right here that are the difficult ones. In this case, it's raising to the 3 halves power. So we're going to define our f of x to be x to the 3 halves. So we've identified the function that we're estimating here. Again, x to the 3 halves. That's the tough operation right there. The next thing we need to do is identify this a value, or this value that we're going to find the tangent line, or the equation of the linear approximation, near this value right here. It's pretty clear, at least to me, that the value that we would want to work with is the x value of 16. The first reason I would see to use the a value of 16 in this case is because 16 is the closest integer to 16.04. But also more importantly, if we think about what's happening with these, this exponent right here, when you raise something to the 3 halves power, that means you're taking the square root and then raising to the third power. 16 is a number that we can easily take the square root of. All right, let's now do the work of finding the linear approximation. So we're using here again f of x equals x to the 3 halves. The first component we always have is just to evaluate our original function at this a value right here of 16. f of 16 equals 16 to the 3 halves. This is 16, take the square root to get 4. 4 and then cube it. 4 cubed is 64. The next thing we need to do is find our derivative of f of x. f prime of x in this case, we just use the power rule here, bring the 3 halves down front, subtract 1 away from this to get x to the 1 half, or the square root of x. Then we need to evaluate f prime of x at 16. In this case, that would be 3 halves times the square root of 16, or 16 to the 1 half. Or this becomes 3 halves times 4, which is 6. So we've done all the tough work. We now can find our linear approximation. So our linear approximation is first, the value of our derivative at our a value here is 6. That's the slope of the tangent line. Times x minus 16, right? Minus that a value, plus the function value at 16, which is 64. We'll just clean up this linear approximation real fast, distribute this 6 to get 6x minus 96 plus 64. Combine these terms to get the linear approximation equals 6x minus 32. So this linear equation right here does a really good job at estimating the values that you get when you raise values to the 3 halves as long as you stay close to the x value of 16. Or in other words, if I'm trying to estimate the value of 16.034 to the 3 halves, I simply can plug in 16.034 in for x into this equation. And then when I evaluate this, I got 64.204. While linear approximation does have its, its limitations, this is the basis for many more complex structures we do in later mathematics. But I hope you appreciate how incredible this actually is. That the value of this, which by the way, by hand, if you didn't have technology to take a number that's not a nice perfect square and raise it to three halves is incredibly hard to get any kind of accuracy. Though in this case, through some simple linear approximation, we were able to estimate this value up to three decimal places. If you have technology in a calculator right now, plug in 16.034 raised to the three halves. When you get that answer, you may be amazed to realize that this is a pretty dang good approximation of that value.